Thank you for tuning in on this special little twist to the realm of unknown, Fright Month. Throughout the entire month of October, each day we shall be looking into one location in or around the city of Philadelphia, giving you their history and some of the hauntings associated to these areas. These will be shorter episodes than the normal weekly ones that you are used to, but I hope you still enjoy our journey into these locations' pasts and what part of that history may still be lingering here in the present. Be sure to check out the Patreon throughout the month for show notes, links, and resources for each location, as well as some special behind-the-scenes content to celebrate this joyous month of frights. Washington Square is one of the five original squares that are located throughout Philadelphia. Surveying back in 1682 while William Penn was busy shaping Philadelphia into his image. At the time, due to Quaker belief in not naming places after people, the location was known as Southeast Square. Ironic you may think since Pennsylvania is named after William Penn, however that is sort of a light jab in his regards from the person who actually loaned the location to him. However, today again we are talking about Washington Square, and not too many years would pass by after the inception of the square in which it would ultimately end up being used as a potter's field, or a sort of makeshift cemetery used to bury those who are unknown or unidentified. This role in the park's lifetime spanned about 90 years, burying individuals between the years of 1704 and 1794. These burials were generally done fairly cheaply, in which the bodies were wrapped in canvas and placed into simple wooden coffins. Beginning in the year 1776, troops who had died as a part of Washington's army were also buried here in the square. They would dig pits about 20 feet by 30 feet in length along 7th Street and Walnut Street after which they then began to pile up the coffins one by one until there was absolutely no space left within the mass grave, and then they would fill it in. Come the following year in 1777, the British Army actually occupied Philadelphia for a very short portion of the overall war. The British forces utilized the Walnut Street Jail, which was positioned opposite of the square, in order to hold war prisoners that they brought along with them into the city. Due to this, and the harsh and rather poor conditions that the facility had, several deaths occurred during this period due to sickness, exposure, and other conditions. And this would not be the end of death when it comes to the location, as yellow fever swept through the area in 1793, resulting in many falling victim to the contagious disease, and ultimately ending up within the square. The square eventually closed down as an acting cemetery, however the overall atmosphere did not really improve that quickly. Houses and structures that were currently located around the square were little more than huts and shacks at the time. Improvements, however, would begin in 1815 with the initiation of a public walk that would cut through the now park. The following year, a tree planting program began, and to this day, the lush greenery within the park can be linked back to this specific project. And come 10 years later in 1825, the then named Southeast Square was renamed Washington Square in honor of the general and first president George Washington himself, and it remains that way until today. Finally, the last thing I'd like to mention within the park would be the Tomb of the Unknown Revolutionary War Soldier, otherwise known as the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier of the Revolution. This is a war monument which is located within the square, and it was erected in honor of the thousands of soldiers who died during the American Revolution, many who ended up being buried within the square. This memorial was first conceived in 1954 by the Washington Square Planning Committee and was finished three years later in 1957. The tomb includes remains that were disinterred from the square due to archaeological examination. 
The remains are that of a Revolutionary War soldier whose allegiance is still unknown, whether he was a colonial or whether he was a part of the colonial or British army is still a mystery to this day. This memorial stands also as a reminder due to the fact that the exact number of bodies located within the square is still relatively unknown. We have a rough estimate, however, the total number is still to be determined, and to this day, occasionally, bodies will still be discovered during construction and maintenance projects that may disturb the grounds around or within the square. Of all the locations that we shall be discussing throughout Fright Month, Washington Square is certainly up there on the top tier. The mass burials that occurred within the square for nearly a century have collected a rather large amount of graves. The Revolutionary War alone accounted for nearly 2,000 of these bodies, and this is all before you consider the extra few thousand that were involved with the yellow fever epidemic along with the time in which the square was a potter's field. In the end, you're looking at a number much closer to about 20,000 bodies underneath the square, although again, this is still not an exact number, and archaeologists and historians are still unclear as to the exact number of bodies that are underground. So it is reasonable to believe that with this sort of trauma and death stirring up some sort of spiritual presence, that a location such as Washington Square would certainly fit the bill. A specific event that may have stirred about a lingering of a particular spirit was a string of grave robbering that had began to occur once the square was being used to bury victims of the yellow fever and smallpox outbreaks that affected the region in 1793. Many of these break-ins resulted in the collecting and stealing of several cadavers, as selling them to the city's local medical institutions was a decent way for a thief to earn an extra income. While due to these break-ins, an old Quaker woman by the name of Leah took it upon herself to begin patrolling the perimeter of the square in an effort to deter more robberies. After her death, however, people began reporting sightings of Leah wandering around the exterior of the square, following the same path that she would have taken while in life. Leah is supposedly spotted rather frequently at night, oftentimes as a cloaked figure silently patrolling. However, it is notable that due to her being Quaker, it is also likely that her translucent apparition may also be wearing a bonnet instead, and people are simply misinterpreting it. Supposedly, too, a local detective from South Philadelphia was on his way up to work during November of 2007 when he stopped at the fountain within the square in order to pour some coffee, during which he reportedly saw Leah wandering around one of the entrances of the square. Her figure was hunched over and draped in a blanket, and at first the officer assumed it to be a homeless individual. This was until Leah's figure began disappearing into thin air. Although this story is oftentimes used to further the credibility of these sightings overall, please take it with a grain of salt, as I'm not 100% on all of the details. As most places that will report this particular story often have a generic officer at an undisclosed time spotting Leah in the park. However, piecing together information from both ghost tour services of the square as well as upload dates for specific videos and articles, I was able to provide a more specific date as well as some more details of the account overall. But again, don't take this as a fact because I have personally not been able to find any of the first or second hand accounts from this supposed detective or anyone that he told the story to. So just keep that in mind. Some other miscellaneous apparitions have also been spotted in the square as well as the surrounding area. Some of these accounts may simply be Leah again, but in these few instances, all descriptions are rather vague and the figures themselves have very little detail. People sometimes report the sense of uneasiness while visiting the square, but if you were aware of the amount of bodies beneath your feet, you'd likely be a bit unsettled as well. Visitors and tourists to the square have often reported hearing disembodied voices, both inside and around the location, 
Sometimes people will report the sounds of screaming, chains being moved, and creepy, unidentifiable noises that can be heard from within the square. Although this location is a publicly accessible spot within the city, and one can walk freely throughout it at all hours of the day. So also keep that in mind, that because of this, and because of its outdoor location being settled within the heart of the city, it makes things a bit trickier to definitively lean into the paranormal camp when it comes to many of these reports, particularly in my instance when it comes to those pertaining to sound and distant noises, as it is very easy to misinterpret sounds within the city as something that you cannot noticeably see in that instance. But that shall be all for today's location. I hope you guys enjoyed learning some of the history and haunts that are linked to the area. Remember, if you want to check out the show note links and resources used to research this episode, along with some of the behind the scenes and exclusive content, then be sure to check out the podcast's Patreon. Or if you wish to stay up to date for all of what Fright Month has to offer, then you can do so over on Twitter and Instagram at Realm of Unknown. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed today's brief episode, and I hope you continue to join us throughout Fright Month here at Realm of Unknown.